Hey, congratulations on all of the Monday sales today. There's still plenty of time left on the clock too. And kudos to the three S's and everyone just really taking advantage. I, I often think about how getting off to a great start on Monday is so, so important. And for, for many people, for most people, and, and for me especially, uh, I feel like getting off to a great Monday has to do with me planning ahead to do a few significant key things. And so kudos to everyone for making that happen. Today's topic, I, I want to plant the seed, if you've never heard of it, of this term called persuasion. Persuasion. We've heard of the term persuasion. There's another one called persuasion, and it's really, really interesting. In fact, I will follow this up with a link to a video that I was watching while I was eating lunch earlier. Uh, watch a short YouTube video. I don't watch a lot of videos, but this one hung out in my tabs for a while and uh, stuck around. So I'm going to pass it along. It's the author of this book called Persuasion. And the, the, the title is somewhere in the long lines of uh, the psychological trick to getting people to say yes. Now, I, I say that in a sense that one of my favorite things about being a publisher, about best version media as an organization, is there's not trickery or anything like that. In fact, it's really amazing. You jump on a call and you listen to you know, the vice president of the company, vice president of sales, Kevin Orton. Uh, literally say, hey, how I handle objections is I like to tackle things logically and simply. And that's just uh, something I can absolutely get behind. It's I really believe when you can uh, effectively and simply communicate, uh, things go really well. They go as, as great as they can be. So communication is obviously key in this role. So let's talk about this idea of persuasion. I've also heard the term pre-framing and the, <clears throat> what was brought up in the, the video was, well, there's a few things. I'll pass the video and let you watch it. But the one thing I thought was really interesting is it talked about a consultant and it said the consultant would, and I'm going to ruin part of the video for you. Sorry about that. Uh, would go to introduce his pricing. And, and you might've actually heard me say this about referrals, which is really interesting. Um, he would say, you know, he'd pull out his pricing, his proposal, and it'd say, and they use the proposal. I know we don't use that. We're not really doing proposals. We're doing campaigns and custom solutions, but it would say $75,000. But before or right when he pulled it out, uh, I guess right when he pulled it out and would show it, he said, hey, as you can see here, I can't charge you a million dollars, right? Pretty interesting. What's the the psychology behind that or the persuasion idea behind that? Well, 75,000 doesn't seem like much compared to a million, right? So something interesting is we get into, as we think about our closing process, introducing pricing, um, that's really important. I often think that that's a fun way to get referrals. If you haven't heard me talk about that before, then, uh, you know, when we're going to ask referrals, uh, you know, I'll say things like, uh, hey, you know, if you could just write down 100 of, uh, you know, 100 people that I could introduce this to, that would be great. And they chuckle and they look at me and kind of laugh with them, right? 100 people. But even then, 10 doesn't sound like a lot compared to 100. So, uh, that's uh, something interesting that we can leverage in terms of just perspective. 10 is not really very much, you know, $1,000 a month is not, uh, you know, a lot for um, some businesses, uh, for other businesses, maybe a little bit of stretch for some businesses, it's a drop in the bucket really. So it kind of depends. We need that perspective depending on who we're sitting across from. The other thing it makes me think of, and this is more of pre-framing. So that's considered persuasion. There's pre-framing, which is really just about human nature. Uh, let's look at the world in two ways. In some things there are certainty and some things there are uncertainty, right? So uh, certainty is, you know, as of right now, the sun rises in the east and sets in the west. We can be pretty certain about that now. I won't go into the astrophysics of the world being on a wobble and a tilt. And so every 10 to 12,000 years, that's not the case, right? So that changes over time. But for our lifetime in this era, uh, rises in the east, sets in the west. Pretty straightforward. Now there's uncertainty and uncertainty causes a lot of fear. It, it creates resistance. It creates friction that what's going to come next. Um, what are some ways we reduce that? Well, really it's the presentation, the way it's designed. Um, another thing that I, I believe uh, Kevin Orton is introducing back in training, we talked about this a couple of weeks ago, is when it comes to introducing pricing. Something for a long time that we discussed. I've got some animals here trying to come uh, visit me at the door. Uh, that uh, It's like a, some kind of a reptile there. So uh, 
Um, one thing that we we used to do and we got away from, and you're welcome to introduce this into your presentation if you find it uh, helpful. And that is simply when you go to introduce pricing before you pull it out, letting people know a few things. Hey, by the way, uh, these are the monthly investments. Most business uh, owners just put a card on file, make it super simple. And then there's two, two different ways to approach this here. If you're an imprint or a flip publisher, you would say something along the lines of, uh, and getting you set up today would get you a spot in the next edition or in the May edition, June edition, whatever edition you're working on. If you're free print, right? If you're working towards your first deadline, you would say something like, uh, this will reserve your spot in the first, the inaugural edition, and I'll give you plenty of notice before the first billing, right? Now I will say if you're in print, there's no need to mention the first billing date or the next deadline. And the reason I say that is it's human nature to want to delay and procrastinate. So I would leave that information out in a sense of uh, if you say it and volunteer that information, that might automatically steer someone to think about, oh, I'll just make the decision in 10 days when the deadline is, right? Now, if the deadline's a lot closer, if they, like let's say today you have a 25th deadline, you might uh, you might decide to go, hey, by the way, um, you know, today is the deadline for getting the next edition, at least to get the agreement signed. We still have a few days to work on your ad and don't worry, you know, we can just put a placeholder in the publication. We can totally work that out. Um, but if you want to get in that next edition, uh, today's the day. So, you know, there's different ways to do that. And it makes me think a lot about what is, you know, when you think about the highest level of success in communication and closing and operating uh, with people making decisions, what is too much information and what is not enough? What's the right balance? So I'll just leave you there with that in terms of persuasion and uh, and closing and pre-framing. And the last thing is, what are we focusing on? Super interesting. Some of the calls I was having, one of the themes that emerged is the fact that if we operate from a place of what does the perfect outcome look like? Obviously, picking up the phone for every dial going you know, aiming for an appointment, walking into every appointment, aiming for uh, a sale. In a perfect world, when it think when we think about an actual appointment, we do a complete presentation. Maybe there's some questions. Things, you know, flow pretty well. There's not a lot of friction or resistance. And at the end, when I ask for the order, they go, "Fantastic! Here's my card. We go welcome aboard. That's perfect. That's what we want to aim for. The same way that basketball player aims for." you know, a perfect swish every time, the same way, uh, you know, input that anywhere, right? Someone's aiming for perfection. It uh, doesn't mean perfect exists, and it doesn't mean we're going to get that every time, but that's the aim that we want to have because it helps create the best possible scenarios. You'll find when we keep an ideal image in mind, our actions, our operating, uh, you know, habits, they will shift towards the things that help create that. So pretty powerful stuff. Um, congratulations, everybody, just on another great week. Last week, the week before, we're just building on this momentum, a great start to the week already. So uh, keep it up, very fun.